Hi, everyone. I'm Reen Wilcoxon, owner of Embroidery Garden, and welcome to my October demo. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do boxed corners on my In the Hoop uh, zipper bag set. So let's see who's rolling in here. Go ahead and type in the chat. I want to make sure that you can hear me, see me, that everything's good before I actually get started today. It's a really nice, beautiful day here in um, Indiana. It's a nice fall day. The sun is out finally. We've had a lot of rain. Hi, Nancy. Thanks for joining me. Um, I just want to make sure again that everyone can hear me um, before I really start to get started here. Hi, Karen. Okay. Got the okay that you can hear me and everything. So while people are still rolling in, first thing I want to do, I always do when I start my um, demos is go over classes that are coming up. So on October 19th, hi, Tammy. Hi, Debbie. Um, Caroline is going to be previewing her brand new class, the Fabric Embellished Pumpkin. Pumpkin, this is made out of clothesline. This is my sample. Um, I haven't put the bow on mine. Caroline. Caroline is actually going to show us how to make a bow. So that's going to be really nice. Hi, Carrie. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Julie. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Vicki. So this is the class coming up on the 19th. We're going to make this cute little pumpkin. You're going to be able to decorate it any way that you want. And Caroline will show you how to make the bow. You can sign up for classes at embroiderygarden.com. On the 21st, let me grab my trigger treat because it's so cute. This will be the last class for um, this cute little mini hanging. This is a design that is a collaboration between um, Rhonda and Jonathan from Stitch and Time Designs and Embroidery Garden. And just look how adorable this is. It's mylar, it's shiny. Jonathan is the one who does all this um, interior part. I turned it into the little in the hoop hanger. This class is on the 21st. Hi, Bonnie, nice to see you. Uh, so again, yeah, you can sign up on embroiderygard.com for that. On the 23rd, Joanne Banco and I are going to be having our second meeting of the Let's Get Creative Club. Um, we previewed that. We debuted it actually um, last month. This month, on it's actually next, next Saturday. I'm going to be showing you how to do this cute little, it's a silverware holder. I took my silverware out, but it is a silverware holder. It's pieced. It's quilted, and I used HTV um, glitter vinyl on mine, but we're going to talk about how to, you know, add embroidery onto it also. Hi, Judy. Hi, Bonnie. Hi. Good morning, Jay. And Joanne is going to show you how to make embroidered greeting cards and holiday cards. Joanne has a special technique that she uses that is, um, oh, it's just, it's amazing. You are really going to uh, love that demo. So you can sign up for the Let's Get Creative meetings um, on Embroidery Garden's website. Know that you get all the files to make everything. This And the files, my design files, my in the hoop files will stay within a five by seven hoop. Anything Joanne does with embroidery will stay within a five by seven hoop. These classes are not repeated. The content is new every month. So just, just know that. Hi, Linda. Nice to see you. Carol, Dolores. Thanks everyone for coming in. I know you're excited to get to this. I got a few more classes though I wanna announce. Um, the Give Thanks Mylar Mini Quilt. This is happening on the 26th. This again is a collaboration between Ascension Time Designs, Rhonda and Jonathan and Embroidery Garden. The part with the pumpkin, the sunflower and the leaves, that's all the Mylar. This is a really pretty design. Um, so sign up for this class. And let's see, then on the 28th, Caroline is going to be doing, this class has been really popular. If you're in my InHoot Facebook group, you've seen all the beautiful um, bowls that everyone has been um, posting. She's going to be doing the wrapped handle clothesline bowl class again. Um, Caroline's going to show you how you start it. Then we're going to add a piece of accent fabric. She's going to show you how to make handles, and she's going to show you how to make the wrapped handle and how to finish it off. She'll have beautiful samples to show you um, of different ways that she's finished it off. Hi, Ann. I, um, I've got all my supplies I'm gonna be using today in my little bowl over there. On 
um, let's see, November 3rd, I am hosting the free virtual dime uh, patch party. So if you want to learn how to make patches, remember a few months ago, I showed you my little B patch that I had that said, be creative, uh, be different. So they're going to go over exactly how to make patches and what you need. That's on the third. You can sign up for that um, on a Broderick Gardens Facebook page. On December 1st, I'm going to be doing applique affair with Dime. Um, they're going to talk all about applique and they're going to be talking also about Joanne Baco's newest um, design collection said if you saw that debut on Thursday, beautiful uh, collection of applique roses and stars and um, some folk art. Uh, Julie, you love the bowl class. Yours turned out beautiful. Dolores, I'm not going to be in Houston in person this year with all brands, but I'm going to be there virtually. So when it's time that I would have done my demos there, I'm actually recording it on Monday and all brands will have it up on the screen. So if you want to stop by and watch my demo uh, virtually, you can do that. Hi, Peggy. Uh, let's see, I'm looking through some of the comments. Uh, Kathy, thank you. She says, what a great way to spend the Saturday morning watching me. So um, last thing I want to mention about um, events, December 12th. I'm sorry, December 18th, mark it down. That is Embroidery Gardens 2021 Favorite Things. Um, my sponsors are starting to roll in with their giveaways. There are going to be a lot more to come. Um, so just mark it on your calendar so that you don't miss it. I agree, Carrie. Joanne's new rose collection is beautiful. Okay, so let's get to what we came here to do today. This is what I'm going to show you how to do. This is from my In the Hoop zipper bag set. And you can notice I boxed the corners. Now, these are true boxed corners, meaning the inside, the lining, um, I know you can't see it in there, but they are boxed separately than the outside um, boxed corners. Uh, Norma, you want to know about the Halloween mini? That class is coming up, the mini quilt on the 21st. Um, the banner behind me, that's a panel from Northcott. I just added a border around it. I haven't quilted it or anything. I won't get that to, um, I won't get to that this year. So to do this, um, you, you can still use my in the hoop zipper bag set. Now that's the set I'm talking about. That's the set that has 11 different sizes of bags. They're all zipper bags. There are, um, let's see, there are six square sizes in the set and five rectangular sizes in the set. Okay, so this is a large set. This is a very versatile set. Um, they come with quilted fronts. Let me see if you can kind of see the quilting on this. It's stippling on the front and they're also plain on the front. Um, hi, June. So besides, you know, getting all these different sizes in this set, this is the set that Molly made designs. My friend Molly also created the SVG files for the cork fronts. So Molly has like three different sets of different um, uh, patterns. And you get two different patterns for each size. So this is, um, I believe the six by 10, you have this pattern and then you have another pattern to choose from. So that's 22 files she has and they are exclusive for this set. Um, right at the very beginning of this uh, live, I posted some links. If you downloaded the link to the um, uh, PDF file that I always give for my demos, you're gonna find links to everything. What I posted at the beginning of this were was the link to the PDF file and um, the link to basically everything, all the classes that I just talked about, everything. A lot of people are saying they love this set. It is the only zipper bag set you'll ever, ever need because you can add your own designs to it, you know, also. I've always wondered why people buy, um, you know, a bag set because it has a flower on it and then you're going to go buy another one because there's a dog on it, etc. With this set, you have all these sizes. You can add whatever you want to on the front. So it's the bag set. 
There's court files available. That makes it more versatile. Um, last month or so, trying to find my other sample, here it is. Uh, I think it was back in July, maybe, I showed you how to use foil on the bag. That was a fun um, demo. This, you also use those files from Molly Made Designs. You can watch all of the videos that I've done um, either on Embroidered Garden's YouTube channel or on Embroidered Garden's Facebook page. So now I'm gonna show you how to do box corners. So that's making the set even more versatile. So let me set some of this stuff aside. And um, Marty, I put that right at the beginning of this um, video. So it's gonna be like the first comment on the video. When we're done, you can go back and rewatch it and you can see that. There's also, like I said, every month, I put up a PDF file that lists everything I'm gonna show with links to it. So how did this idea come about to do the box corners? Well, um, hold on, there's so many questions coming in. Um, again, I'll put the links up again later on. Hold on, let me just see if I can get it posted again here. Okay, that should work. One other thing I wanted to mention too, before I get started, um, there was a, one other thing. I, if you are following Embroidered Garden on Embroidered Garden's page or on Instagram, you saw a recent post um, that I made a blog post for Shannon Fabrics. I did some little dog coats for our Dachshund, uh, miniature Dachshund girls, their little sisters. I made them holiday coats. The blog post is up on Shannon Fabrics blog. You can Google for that. And the pattern for my coat is there. The instructions to make the coats are there. And Shannon Fabrics is doing a giveaway. There's gonna be four winners of a two yard cut of Shannon Fabrics. So um, it's very easy to enter. Just, you know, go read the blog post or um, go read the post on my Facebook page, Shannon Fabrics Facebook page, Shannon Fabrics Instagram page. Okay, so. Again, now I'll get back to how did the idea for the box corners come about? Well, I don't know, let's, I think it could have been five years ago now. I met someone when I was doing um, an event at Meisner's in Sacramento, Linda Martello. She, I believe she came to all of the events that I did there at Meisner's. I went there like four or five years in a row. I think it was four years in a row. And, um, you know, did three back-to-back -back classes there every year. So one year Linda came and she brought me this bag. She had made it. It's my nine and a half um, by 14 zipper bag out of the set I just showed you. Uh, thanks, Lynn. Liz says the dogs are adorable. And this is how she customized it. She added, you know, one of my frayed flowers. This is um, a license plate that I had for row by row um, a few years ago, but she boxed the corners. And when I saw it, it was like, how did you do that? And so she kind of told me how she did it at that point, but it really didn't sink in. And I started thinking about it more and more. I contacted Linda again, and she kind of went over it again, and then something clicked, and I knew how to do it. Uh, Nancy, yeah, I met you at Meisner's years ago, too. But so she added some other customizations to this bag. So again, this is another thing of how versatile this set is. Well, she added a strap and she used, um, I believe these are called strap connectors. She added a pocket to the back. She used foam in here. This is um, like the thin foam. So it gives the bag a lot of structure. And she even customized the inside of the bag. Look, she's got pockets with vinyl um, on them. She's got a little thing to attach a key to your house key. So this is where the inspiration from this came from Linda. So what I'm gonna be showing you today is I'm gonna basically go through the steps of making the bag because I gotta make one to show you how to do the box corners. Are the box corners done in the hoop? No, they're not. You can't do true box corners in the hoop. To do um, true box corners, you have to box the corners of the lining and box the corners of the um, outside fabrics separately. You can't do it together. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm also gonna be showing you my Presson a Hoop pads again. I'm gonna be using the eight by 12. These are the brother baby lock ones. 
I just got contacted by the company. These are my new shipment is coming. Um, it's going to be shipped out Monday, so I should have it maybe Wednesday. I'm going to be using the 8x12, and I'll be showing you that a little bit closer up here in a little bit. And I have to show you the samples for the um, biking hoops. This is the 260 by 200, the one, the 250 by 140. So these are on pre-order. They're coming in with my shipment that's being sent to me on Monday. So if you want these, go to invertergarden.com and order them so you can get in on the shipment that's coming. These have been very hard for me to keep in stock. All right, I'm gonna to check to see if there's any questions. I met a lot of people at Meisner's. Um, Karen loves the pressing pads. I believe you ordered some, didn't you, Karen? Thank you for that. Okay, so let me get all of my stuff here. I've got everything cut. I'm gonna switch my camera so you can see all the supplies that I have um, that I'm gonna be making this bag. Okay, here we go. All right, let me just get my pressing pad into view here. Um, I've already got my kit cut, everything that I need. I've already gone ahead and I've put the zipper in. That's steps one and two of the bag. Already done that just because um, I want to get to the boxing of the corners. So, but here's where my pressing pads come in. So, I need to work on the back side of the hoop now. So, I'm going to turn it to the back side and lay it down over the top of the pressing pad. And now you can see I have a nice firm area to work on. Anyone who wants a different size of pressing pad, all you have to do is just send me an email. So the next step in this bag is to add your lining onto the back side. And I'm just gonna line this up with that um, zipper. And I'm gonna try to move the camera up a little bit so I can get a little bit more into view. Let's see if that helps. You know what, let's turn it sideways because um, I think you can see it better sideways. All right, there we go, we see a little bit better. So I'm gonna be adding this piece on. I have to tape it down. So the pressing pad puts a nice firm surface so that I can tape. You know, if you don't have some, you know, the pad underneath here, what happens is you're pressing on your stabilizer. And when you press on your stabilizer, um, you know, you're shifting it, you're moving it. So this pad is giving me a nice surface. Later, we're gonna iron on it. Susie, I don't have Berninas yet. They will probably be coming later. And someone had just asked about, will it work with other bag sets? Probably, um, but I can't give you a list of all my bag sets that this technique is gonna work with. Once you have seen me do it, then you can, you know, give it a try with something else. Uh, Ginger, Janome pads are coming. Um, I have the information. I got to get it up on the website to get a pre-order. So now I got to put the fabric on the right side of the hoop. Um, so what I've done too with this, I've ironed SF 101 onto the back side of all of my main fabrics. And I've done that to give the body a little bit more stability since the box uh, corners are going to kind of, you know, open the bag up a little bit down here. This will give it a little bit more structure. Um, if those links aren't working, Carol, um, I will put them up again later. That's why you need to download the PDF file when I put it up. Okay, so this one goes on the front of the hoop. I'm going to tape it in place. And then now I'm ready to stitch the next step. And let me just get it on the machine. I really can't show you the machine, um, but you know, it's just all these steps are very quick. They're very easy um, because I would have to switch cameras so many times. Okay, so while that's stitching, I'll look to see if there's questions. Norma, you like the fabric? A lot of people ask me about the fabric. And the fabric comes from blankquilting.net. It's called Better Stitch. And it's all one word, Better Stitch. Okay, so I have this 
stitched out. So let me get my camera switched over again so that you can see what I'm going to be doing. All right, so it just stitched here, stitched the fabrics on. Next step is to, I'm going to untape this because my next step is going to be to put my batting, let me get it into view for you. I put my batting here lined up with that stitch line that just stitched and I'm going to bring this front piece over. Now, if you want to tape it down, you can, that's perfectly fine. While I have it on the um, press pad, I can actually press on the front side of the hoop too. Pressing is important when doing in the hoop designs. Yeah, I can't stress how important it is. The next step, it's going to base this fabric down for us and it's going to put a, um, like a triple stitch here as a kind of a decorative element. So let me go and get it back on the machine and get this step stitched. This would actually be step number four in the design. So I'll check to see if there are any questions Uh, I do not have the press pads for FOSS. Um, all of this is coming. If you want something for a particular machine, you need to send me an email. You can email me at support at embroideryyarn.com. Whoops. I was going to switch the camera over to me while this step was stitching. And I'm going to be looking for more uh, comments. Hi, Lynn. Um, what kind of zipper have I used? Okay, that's the zipper that's in here. Let me show you this one. Get a close up of it. Sally Tomato has just come out with number three faux metal zippers and a ton of finishes. This one is rose gold. Again, that PDF file that you can download about the October demo has a link to these zippers. Um, she used to always carry number five. Now she's brought in number threes. And the difference between a three and a five is the width of the zipper. All right. Uh, yes, Ginger, that was a Sally Tomato zipper. All right, so we're gonna get back to the bag. Now, I'm gonna be doing the bag, I'm gonna be doing the steps of the bag, but we're gonna get to a point in the steps of the bag that I am going to, we're gonna change some things. Okay, I'm not changing the file at all. I'm gonna be changing the bag. Okay, so now we're going to work on the back side of the hoop, and I have some tape here that, that can come off because this piece on the back side has been um, stitched down. Let me make sure it's on the pad. All right, now we're going to pull it over, or actually it would be folded down. And now I'm going to press. And what's important about pressing, it's to get a nice crisp seam here. I look at a lot of zipper bags, you know, they've been made in the hoop. And I can tell you that if you're looking inside of one and this area here is the area behind the zipper right here. Sometimes if you don't press well or tape well, you're going to get like this bubble up here and that makes your bag not be as nice as it can be. If you press it as you're stitching and use, you know, the press pad, you can see how nice and flat it lays. So that's, you know, one of the big things about um, um, pressing is to get things to look really nice. Next step, I'm going to be putting this lining piece here. I have to tape it down because we're on the back side and you can see how nice I can tape. I can really press down and get my tape secured well because we hate it when we move something and our fabrics fall off on the back side. I have to take the fabric to go on the front, put it down. And if you like to tape, you can. I'm just going to leave it, uh, let it lay there and stitch the next step, which is going to stitch the fabric to the zipper. We're getting close to the part that um, we're going to be changing things up a little bit here so that we can get ready for box corners. Because remember, the box corners aren't going to be done in the hoop. I'm going to stitch a couple more steps, then it's going to come out of the hoop. Okay. Yeah, what am I laying under there? It is the press in the hoop pad. 
All right, so this step has stitched. The next thing, well, here's, you probably wanna see this. So all I'm gonna do is lay my batting down. All this is in the instructions when you buy the set. I'm not doing anything different from the instructions yet. So let me just get this lined up. And then I'm just gonna fold this top piece of fabric over and I'll press it down just because it makes it so much nicer. And so all I've done is folded this top piece over a piece of batting. The next step is going to um, do another row of triple stitch, just like it did below the zipper. This is gonna be above the zipper. Let me get that going. And then, like I said, we're going to pretty soon here, um, get it to where we're gonna be changing up the instructions a little bit. The mini iron I'm using, it's one of those little steam fast irons. I, when I use my press pad, I normally use my big iron, you know, my regular size iron, but um, I kind of confined here in this area and, you know, so the small iron works better um, for me here. Will the uh, press and a pad hoops work with the dime magnetic hoop? Um, and not really, because of the way that that hoop is. That's more of a frame than a hoop. Um, and somebody asked about, yes, this is a handle. So you can easily, you know, pick it up and move it if you have to, like you go to your ironing, or I'm sorry, maybe you're at your cutting table doing something, you can carry it. It has this really nice non-slip material on the back. So when you set it down on any surface, it's not going to slide around on you. Okay, so I'm gonna switch my cameras again so you can get a good view at what I'm gonna be doing here. All right, so I just stitched the line here, stitch this fabric on. I have to go to the back side of the hoop and let me put it over the press pad. This was already pressed down. This piece needs to get folded up and I'm going to press it. And see, I can press down nice and firm, get a nice, sharp, crisp edge on that fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tape this up here just because I don't want it to flop around on me. And the next step is to, if you have done these zipper bags before, you know we trim out the stabilizer here um, right behind the zipper area. So let me go ahead and get that. I can get that out really quickly. This is so that we can get into our bag later on when it's finished. Okay. Now, this is where the instructions, you basically leave the instructions and I'm gonna switch the camera around. All right, so this is the back side of the hoop and this is the front side. The instructions will tell you at this point to unzip the zipper halfway. So let me get that done. The tape I'm using, Kathy, is um, medical tape. You, it's Transport 3M medical tape. I get it off of Amazon in a big box. Hi, Alice. Alex loves her pressing pads. Great. Hi, Lisa. Okay, so I've unzipped my zipper halfway. You can see the pull here in the middle. Now this is where we leave the instructions because the, what we have to do now is we go back to the back side, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the large piece of lining up. We want it out of our way. Okay, so the large piece of lining is up. This is, dip, this is where it varies from the bag instructions. So right after the zipper gets unzipped halfway, you take the lining piece, the big one on the back and fold it up. And let me get, switch my camera again so you can see what we're gonna do next. Whoops, didn't get it. All right, so again, just to show you that more clearly, this piece was down. We are gonna fold it up. We're gonna to go to the front side of the hoop. I'm gonna take um, the next piece of fabric, lay it right side down, lay my batting on top, 
This is like in the instructions. The only thing that was different was I took this piece of um, lining and folded it up out of the way. I'm going to put it back on the machine. So let me kind of grab it here. And it's going to stitch the next step. So again, I'm not changing the file any. I'm just kind of changing the steps a little bit. So right now it's stitching um, the next step in the design. Cheryl, you'll be able to watch this again. It will stay up on Embroidery Garden's Facebook page, and it's also being live streamed right now to YouTube, Embroidery Garden's YouTube channel. Ginger, I'm not updating any instructions. This is just kind of like an add-on thing. So don't look for it to be in the instructions. If you want to know how to do it, you'll have to refer back to this video. Norma, the trimming in the hoop part freaks you out no need for it to freak you out at all. <laughs> all right, so that step just stitched. And let me switch the camera because we're getting, you know, this next step is going to be important. And I want you to be able to see it. Okay, so what it stitched was a line right here. You can see that. So now we go to the back side of the hoop. And remember, this piece had been folded up out of the way. Now it's gonna get folded back down again. You're gonna take your lining, your last piece of fabric, and it's gonna go right side down on the back side of the hoop. Get it all smooth. You could iron it if you wanted to. And now I'm gonna tape all four corners down because we wanna make sure that this doesn't um, flip up or move on us in any way. And now what we're going to do, and you know, I'm not gonna be able to show you my machine because I don't have a, um, a camera on it. Let's get to the back side so I can show you what's gonna happen. Okay, you can see, see the hoop. What it's gonna do, the next step, and let me grab a pin here, it starts to stitch right here and it goes around, all the way around the hoop. What I'm gonna do is, when I start, the needle's gonna be here. I'm going to advance the step, the stitches, to the needle gets about halfway up into my hoop. Then I'm gonna let it continue to stitch, you know, all the way around until it gets about halfway down the opposite side. So right there, I'm gonna stop, okay? So what I'm doing again, this is where the needle starts on this step. I'm advancing my machine steps until I get um, to about the middle of the hoop here. Then I'm gonna let it stitch and go all the way around and I'm gonna stop it here and I'm gonna take it out of the hoop. So let me get that on the machine and get that stitching. So again, I right now what I'm doing is, let me get this camera switch back over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using the advanced um, stitch button on my machine and I'm going to advance it until it gets about to that area that I showed you. I'm going to start my machine now and let it stitch around until it gets to that opposite side that I'm going to stop it. And I'm gonna show you that um, as soon as it gets done stitching. I am going to have to watch because I want to make sure that I stop it. <laughs> yeah, Carrie, the bag does look nice and flat and the inside is really nice. And that's what you want. You want the lining to be really nice. So let's see. Hi from Ontario. Hi from Maine. Thank you all for joining me today. So if you have any questions, let me know. Again, this is not in the bag instructions. This is just kind of something that, you know, came about. I'm getting close to where I'm going to be stopping. So I need to watch um, my hoop here so I don't mess up. <laughs> okay, so I'm about halfway on that other side and I'm going to stop the machine. I'm going to cut the thread. And I'm going to take it off the machine. And I'm going to show you exactly what's stitched. All right, so now... I'm done with the embroidery of the um, bag. 
And so I'm just gonna get set up here for something else. Okay, so let's switch the camera and look and see what I've done. All right, and I'm just gonna, okay, so you can see this is where the needle started, was going to start. I advanced so the stitching would start here. I let it stitch around and I stopped it here. I cut my thread, I stopped it, and now it's time to um, take it out of the hoop because we're gonna have to machine sew the box corners, okay? They don't, um, I, you can't, again, you can't do box corners correctly and how they're supposed to be in the hoop. Uh, Lynn, the bags do have quilting on this one. I didn't add any quilting just, you know, for, um, for time. But you can pick the, um, the files with the quilting or the files without. And let me get the other camera um, up. All right, so again, I'm taking it out of the hoop. It's out. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Let me get a lot of this stuff out of the way here so I can get ready to show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna switch it back. I wanna see if there's any questions. The big reveal when it comes out of the hoop, right, Norma? But we aren't done with this yet because now we're going to start working on how to box the corners. Okay, so it did come out of the hoop. What we have to do first is where it did not stitch, the two areas where it did not stitch, let me turn it so you can see it. We have to draw in those lines as if it did stitch. So I'm just going to, I'm laying my ruler here even with the stitching, and I'm gonna draw a line. I'm on the batting right now. I'm gonna take this line where it stopped here, and I'm gonna connect. Do the same thing on this end. I'm gonna extend out this line, and I'm gonna draw the line on the side. We need these lines in here because these are gonna end up being some of our stitch lines um, to complete this. All right, so what I always do too in my bags, I trim away the batting. And that is so that um, we get the batting out of the corners. It's gonna make our corners lay nicer. And all I'm doing is trimming the batting only, close to that stitching all the way around. It keeps the batting out of the corners and out of the seam line and I'm still trimming where I drew lines. This part is not sewn down, remember? And I'm just going to trim the batting close to that stitching. Might as well do it now because we don't want this uh, batting inside of our boxed corner because it will just make it um, you know, bulky in there. All right, almost done with it. All right, I've got the batting trimmed out. Now, I, um, I, I have to do the same thing on the opposite side. So let's just get um, that marking done here on the opposite side. We have to do the same exact thing on the lining side. Now, this lining side does not have the um, stitch line like the front side had that stitch line down here. The back side doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lining and I'm just gonna fold it up because I can see the stitching here on the um, uh, stabilizer. So I'm just gonna fold it up, press it. Oops, should have left my pressing pad up here. And then that's gonna become my line I'm gonna draw in. So let me grab my ruler. And I'm going to draw the sides, finish off the side here. I'll finish off the side here. Remember, these are gonna be our stitch lines later. That fold I just put in, I have to leave an opening down here when I machine sew this together. So let me just kind of make some little marks. That will be my opening. I'm not gonna be sewing there. So I'm gonna take this and get my um, stitch lines to go to the corners from that uh, mark. All right, so 
the bag is marked as far as um, getting our stitch lines we're going to be using later. And I'm going to turn it this way because it's more, this is the bottom of the bag. So that looks more like how it should be to you. So to box corners, and now this is the eight by 12 size. Remember when you box a corner, whatever size you make the little box in the corner, when it's done, it's going to be doubled. So for instance, on this one, this is the eight by 12 bag. I box the corners at three quarters of an inch. When they're done, this is an inch and a half wide. If you were doing some of the smaller bags, I'd bring that down to half an inch. And then when it was boxed, this would be an inch wide. So let me get the little um, boxes down here in the bottom corner. So I'm marking, whoops, let me get my ruler the way I want it to be. And I'm putting it so that it is three quarters of an inch. Okay, so it's three quarters of an inch, whoops, Sorry, you can't see that. Let me get it lined up again. Okay, so it's three quarters of an inch this way from the corner and this way from the corner. So let me just draw my little box in. Okay, there's one box. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Line it up, whoops, at three quarters and three quarters. And there's my box there. I am going to have to do that on the other side, but let's just work with the um, the lining side first. Okay, so look, get a good look at that. I have to set my machine up now for sewing because we are sewing this. We are not um, doing any more machine embroidery on the bag. So I'm just getting my machine set up for sewing. Oops, I got to put the, um, I'm going to change, go ahead and change this so I can look for comments too. All I'm doing right now, I'm getting my machine set up. I have to take the um, embroidery foot off and get my sewing foot on. Let me just see if there's any comments. The pen I'm using to mark, it's, it's, it's just a marker. It doesn't matter what pen you use. You can use a, um, a heat eraser or air erasable marker, it doesn't really matter. Um, you're not gonna see it. I've even used um, uh, markers or ink pens. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so let me make sure everything is set up here good. Okay, so my machine has now been set up for sewing. Now, when you, let me go ahead and switch the camera again. So that you can understand this. So again, we're working on the lining side of the bag and you're going to notice the lining is separate from the other part of the bag. Remember I said two box corners, you have to do the lining separate than the outside fabrics, which are down here. So what I first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to machine sew, but I'm going to, all I want to sew is my lining. So I'm kind of just going to fold this back so that I don't get any of this uh, outside fabric into my stitching. And what I'm going to do, let's go ahead first and clip our corners out. Let's see, make sure you can see that. Those little boxes I drew in there, I'm clipping them out now. All right, I'm clipping that one. And I'm going to clip this one out. And then I'm going to machine sew this, and I'm going to show you where exactly I'm going to machine sew this. So I'm going to stitch here. I have to finish off this seam because these are not stitched together right here. I don't want to catch any of my fabrics um, from the front side, the outside pieces. That's why I have it all folded up. I'm going to sew here. I'm going to sew here to the start of my opening. We have to leave an opening in our lining so we're able to turn it. Then I'm gonna move over here and I'm gonna sew this and I'm gonna sew this line. Then we'll be boxing the corners. So I'll change the camera view. Let me get it up underneath my machine. 
This is not the machine I normally sew on. Let me get it lined up on the um, my lines, my marked lines. Uh, yes, the video is going to be, you're going to be able to rewatch this. Um, I don't have my foot pedal, so it's a little bit more difficult. I do want to back stitch at the um, start and end of all of these sections. All right, so that was the first line that I stitched down. I'm stitching across the bottom. And remember, I'm stopping to leave my opening to turn it. So this is actually, it's really easy to do this. It's just, you know, remembering the steps. Okay, I'm back stitching where I want that opening to be. I'm going to speed my machine up just a smidge. I'm doing the other side of the opening and I'll show you all this when I'm, um, I have it done. Back stitch and now I'm on the last um, side that I'm going to stitch. Yeah, this is pretty uh, clever how this is done. And I have to, you know, really thank Linda for, you know, the inspiration and, you know, basically the how to of doing this. So I'm on this very last um, area here. And I've got that stitched. All right, so let me show you exactly what I did. It, it, this is just so much fun. It really is. Okay, so you can see where I stitched. I stitched, all this is now closed. The only thing that's open are my little corners where I'm gonna be turning later and my other little corner is open. So right now I can go ahead and I can trim and remember I'm only working on the lining. I'm not cutting anything else. This will be our quarter inch seam. You know, like when we're done, you make a seam and your seam and in the hoop designs are made by your trimming. And all I'm doing is right now, I'm just gonna trim away, um, whoops, I'm just gonna trim away basically where I stitched because when I box my corners, I don't want all of this, you know, extra here. So let me go ahead and do this area here. Remember, this is my opening. So I'm just gonna cut down this way. We do the same thing on the other side. So this is kind of like in the instructions too, you know, how we, how we trim, but I'm doing it at a different time. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this side. And then we're gonna get ready to box the corner here. And again, we'll, we'll be trimming all around the bag later on. I don't have to do it right now. So to box the corner, we're gonna take the side seam and the bottom seam and get those put together. So we're basically kind of making like a little flat area here. I want my um, seams, I like to put one going one way, one going the other way. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin this. Might as well do the other one too while we're here. Bring them together. One seam going one way, the other seam going the other way. And I'm going to mark where I'm gonna sew so you can see that. All I did was kind of like flatten this down because I'm gonna be drawing on it. On the lining, now this is important also, on the lining, when I box the corner, I'm gonna make a bigger seam. I'm making a 3 8 inch seam on the lining pieces. And when I do the outside um, fabrics, I'm gonna do a quarter inch. And why am I doing that? Because this will make the lining a little bit smaller and it will make it sit down inside of the bag nicer. Let's see, I didn't draw a very pretty line, but so this is my 3 8 inch line. Let me get a pin in here because I'm going to be stitching on that line when I go to the machine. Let me go ahead and mark the other one. Again, I've got the corner ready. I have to lay it down so I can mark on it. And I'm marking this at 3 8 of an inch on the lining. I'll be doing a quarter inch on... Um, the outside pieces. And where'd my pin go? Here it is. So now I'm going to be going to the machine and I'm going to be stitching these, this corner here 
right on both these lines. I'm going to do both of my corners. Okay, so let me go ahead and I'll change the camera. So is everyone kind of getting this? I mean, really, it's pretty easy. Um, you know, I'm going kind of slow so that, um, uh, Mildred, the, the name of the bag set, it's the, it's embroidery gardens in the hoop zippered bag set. So all I'm doing now is I'm at the machine and I am sewing this. Let me get everything fixed up here, get it all nice and flat and even. You want to make sure that um, when you do the box corners that you stitch both of them evenly, okay? That will make a difference. I'm kind of, again, like I said, I'm in a, a different place than I normally sew. You want to back stitch. So mine might turn might not be exactly perfect for this demo, but that'll be okay. You will get the idea. So I'm back stitching here. I've got one done. I'm doing the other one. Yeah, Vicki, it does. It is very easy, really. Once you just kind of get the idea of it, um, it's kind of almost as if you were sewing a bag, really. You know, like totally sewing it. The one thing again to remember is you want the seam to be a little bit um, bigger on your lining than on the outside so that the lining fits down nicely inside the bag. Okay, so I got the lining is done. Okay, I'm going to show you that. And then we have to do basically the exact same thing to the outer pieces. So let me change the camera so that you can see it. It really, you know, it adds a dimension. It's something different. It, you know, just again, makes the set more versatile. Okay, so you can see how I had the corners boxed. And there's my opening. Now we need to work on the other side. Let me turn it this way so it looks like it should to you. But on the back, I want to keep that lining out of the way. So I'm kind of you know, folding it up, it's here, it's out of the way because I'm gonna be working down here. Again, I gotta make my little corners and let me get my three quarters of an inch here. Whoops. And I'm just drawing that three quarters of an inch box. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite end. Uh, let's see, three quarters, there we go. All right, I'm going to um, do the same thing I did on the other side. I'm doing making my basically my quarter inch seam. I can get rid of the batting too out of the way. Just make sure you do not cut anything, you know, your lining or anything. Again, we can trim all this later. We'll trim the bag later, you know, all the way around. I just want to get this um, done here. You, you have to really because you don't want all this extra material flopping in your way when you're trying to box your corners, etc. Down here along the bottom, let me get this batting out on stabilizer out of the way. We're going to do the whole bottom at a quarter inch, basically. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing where I'm going to cut out the little corners because we're going to box these corners next. And that one. And let me get this one. And now the exact same thing where I'm going to, whoops, I have to still, I didn't stitch, I have to machine stitch, finish off this seam because it wasn't, it hasn't been sewn together on my line. Same thing over here, I'm going to finish machine stitching. And I'm going to have to do just a tiny bit here at these ends to finish that off before I can box the corner. Let me change the camera. See if there's any questions. Again, when I'm stitching this, I'm going to make sure that um, I don't catch, whoops, sorry, wrong camera. I'm going to make sure when I'm stitching this that I do not catch any of my lining in there. Okay, so I'm doing the exact same thing that I did on the other side. I'm lining this up and I'm just going to stitch. I wish I had my foot, I, my sewing foot, you know, my pedal. That's what I'm 
I mean. You want to back stitch at the end. And again, I'm just finishing off where we didn't, this is the areas that we didn't let um, the embroidery go. Remember, I advanced my stitching. And the reason we did that was so that we can get these box corners in. We have to be able to have room to um, work. That's why it was done like that, so that we have enough room to work. Okay, I just got one more side to um, complete the stitching on. And then we're gonna box these corners. But we're gonna box these corners, the outside corners at a quarter of an inch. All right, this is done. And I'm just going to, whoops, I lift the foot up to take it out. Uh, let's see, Lori's asking, um, do you draw a quarter inch box on the exterior fabric or a three quarter inch box? Okay, so let's, let's get these measurements correct, okay? So on the lining to box the corners, I drew a three quarter inch box. I stitched it with a three eighth inch seam. On the outer pieces, I did a three quarter inch uh, square to box the corners. I'm gonna stitch these with a, a quarter inch seam. I did the lining at three eighths. I'm gonna do this at a quarter inch. Now, and like I said, if you're doing smaller bags, you're not going to want to make this, um, you know, three quarters of an inch. This is the eight by 12. It doubles when it's finished. So if I box a corner at three quarters of an inch, when it's done, it's an inch and a half like this one is. If you're doing like, you know, six by 10, seven by 12, you might want to only um, make your squares. Uh, I don't know, I'd probably make them, uh, you know, like a half inch. But always do a bigger seam when you stitch the box corner on your um, lining than you do on your outside, because that will make your lining um, lay down nicer on the inside. Let's see, what step in the bag do you advance those stitches? You can go back and you can rewatch this again, um, because you really need to know exactly where that's gonna come into play. All right, so I'm going to switch my camera again so you can see me mark these corners. And then we're almost done. Okay, so all I did was I brought the corners together just like I did before the seams, the bottom seam, the side seam. This I'm going to stitch at a quarter inch. This one I'm not going to mark because I, um, I can use the markings on my machine. This one, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'll bring the corners together, put the seams going opposite of each other, and I'm gonna pin it. And these again, I'll just use, show you my ruler here. These, I would stitch at a quarter of an inch. The other ones we did at three eight, uh, eight. This one we're gonna do at a quarter inch. So I'm gonna hop over to the machine real quick and stitch these at a quarter of an inch and again you want to make sure you have everything nice and flat when you're stitching this um and because you want both sides even also if you see my um bag that i did the one that i've been showing my sample both my corners my bottom seam and my side seam line up and that's important that's what you want Okay, I've done one. I'm gonna get the other one sewn. I need to set this machine up so that it lifts my, uh, the foot up when I'm done. I don't have that set up for this one. This machine, I normally don't sew at. Um, this one is the one that I use for embroidery all the time. All right, and I'm back stitching again at the start and stop. And, okay, it's done. All right, so I have, here's my lining and the corners are boxed on the lining, both corners. And here's the front and back of the bag and it's 
um, box. I know, Ginger, you can't see what I'm doing at the machine. I told you earlier you wouldn't be able to see that. Um, I'm showing, I showed you the step, um, what I did before I stitched it, and then I showed it to you after I stitched it. Judy can watch the replay on Embroidery Garden's Facebook page or on Embroidery Garden's YouTube channel. All right, so we got to finish trimming the bag. So let me switch it so you can see how I'm going to trim it. Um, I, I was reading comments. It's it's kind of hard to you know do this when you're doing it by yourself. All right, so everything is done. Again, my corners are boxed on my lining. My corners are boxed on my outside of my bag. I have my opening and my lining. These are separated. I have to finish trimming my bag out. Um, normally, when I trim a bag too, you know, I don't trim the ends of the zipper. I'm just going to today. Usually, I leave those. Um, but to save on time, um, I'm not going to do that. I'm making my quarter inch uh, cut all the way around the bag, quarter inch from the stitching. Ah, my scissors don't want to turn. All right, and then on my bags, I like to um, clip, you know, I'll clip into the seam. We, we've got, you know, some bulk here. So I like to just make little clips into that rounded corner at the top. It helps it to round out better. Let me just do this other one really quick. And then all we have to do is turn the bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach inside the lining. And I'm going to get the bag turned through the lining. That's why we had to leave the lining open. Might not have left a large enough space to turn it easily. There it goes. You want your little tool that you like to, um, you know, poke your corners out with. Because we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to use my fingers here just to get these top corners out. Kind of where I want them to before I use my little tool. And you are going to want to get your boxed corners out down there. Just right now, I just like to kind of get everything in the direction it needs to be. And to make it easier for me, I'm going to get my zipper unzipped all the way. Now I can really get in there and work the bag. Um, like I said, you want to make sure all of your corners are poked out nicely. These are the top corners of the bag. Get this one out well. You know, I, I see a lot of bag pictures and I can see when people don't take the time to do the corners nicely. Now, I also want to get down here and uh, work on these boxed corners at the bottom. So I can go in through my lining and make sure that I get those pushed out nice. The scissors I'm using, I use Kai scissors. I love Kai scissors. I'm just gonna kind of make sure those little points get pushed out in the lining, okay? Um, now, what I also love to use is, let me grab it over here. Let me get this and this and this is in the um, instructions too. This is the totally tubular pressing station from Dime. You're looking at it coming down on the top. This is kind of like the side view of it. Um, it does have wool pads for it. You don't have to necessarily use those because the wood is a nice um, hardwood that uh, can be seamed. So what I'm going to do is I like to turn it up on its end. And then I like to take my bag and I'm gonna put it down over top and I can get the corner of the wood right into the corner of the bag. And I kind of need to stand up to do this. You can feel it in there. Let me make sure that that's pushed in there. Again, I'm not usually, I don't usually work in this area, but you can put it on there, press it, and then you know move to the other side of the corner get that one, press it again. I like to, you know, take my opening. It's too close to the camera, so I'm going to just have to move this a little bit. Take your opening and get everything folded in. Whoops. 
I want this one unfolded and then this folded side so that it comes over. And then what I like to do, I don't necessarily um, hand sew this. I just like to use fusible tape. So what I would do is just put a piece of fusible tape in there. I can use my totally tubular pressing station, turn it up on its end, put the bag over top, and then you can see, I can make sure that everything is lined up and I can take that and I can press it all nice and neat in one step. So, you know, I would use my pressing station to go around and, you know, finish pressing the bag. I can press it. I can get this uh, box where the box corner is. This seam, I can get it all nice and straight. Um, yes, Norma, it really does help to get the corners um, really nice and sharp. Let me kind of lay my other bag down here. Let me show you the, the box corner. It'll come into focus. Okay, so you can see how my side seam and bottom seams line up. You can see that I, look at that. See how nice that looks? It almost looks like a perfect rectangle on the bottom. And that's because I use a totally tubular pressing station. You just go around and press it. I even like to come up and put this edge on the um, wood and I press all along this top edge. But let's get back to finishing up this one. Now all I have to do is turn it to the right side through that zipper. Again, um, I'll use my little tool. Where did it go? Here it is. To, you know, you wanna make sure you get those boxed corners out really nicely, both sides. And you know, after I have everything the way that I want it, um, I will take it back to the tubular pressing station and press it again. Uh, Vicki has the pressing station, makes life easier. Yes, it does. Of probably all my sewing little gadgets, tools, etc., I truly love that uh, pressing station. So again, we would get it all nicely pressed and the bag is done. Um, and so the uh, SF-101 that I ironed to the pieces really does help to make the bag, um, you know, give it its shape. So again, here is my finished one that I totally pressed it all over. And you can see how just how nice it looks. Um, it really is um, a cute um, variation to do on the bag set. Um, like I said, where's the bag? I don't know where I put the one that Linda had sent me, but she added uh, strap connectors here, added a strap. She put a pocket on the back. Molly, you got your pressing station. Hope you enjoy it. And um, you can kind of see inside. I know it's not easy to get a shot inside, but look how nice my lining is laying um, on both areas because I use the press and a hoop pads and that pressing station. Um, Linda, so Linda just said something um, you can also cut a piece of Peltex the size of the bottom and slide that in there. And that makes a nice bottom, keeps your bottom nice and, um, you know, the shape to it. But just by pressing, look how nicely I got the bottom of this bag. Uh, you want to know the name of the fabric? Everyone's asked me that. I did put that in one of the um, links. It's called Better Stitch. All one word. Better Stitch. Gray Spool. Um, try going to www.blankquilting.net. Um, I got this fabric years ago at one of the events I did. You know, I bought so much fabric uh, when I was traveling and teaching. Um, this was one of them. So I'm going to look to see what other questions there are. Uh, thanks, Sue. Uh, if you're going to put a pocket on the back, you have to add the pocket before. We add those two large pieces near the end on top. You got to put your pocket down and then you put that. Um, I, I don't know what pieces they are. They may be G and H or H and I. No, G and H before you do that. You, that would be a great Christmas present, Tammy, to get the pressing pads. Um, yeah, Jay, the box corners really make it nice makes it stand up, um, you know, cute little 
cosmetic bag. And again, though, so it's making the in the hoop zipper bag, bag set even more versatile. Um, someone asked earlier, other uh, of my zipper bags that this can be done on. You know, I can think of some of them that it can be done on. Not all of my bags are made exactly the same, but you know, I started when I started making zipper bags, I made them one way and I used the same technique. Um, so I'm sure you can apply, you know, these steps to other bags. You just have to know when to apply it, when to, you know, advance through those steps so that, you know, it doesn't all get stitched together. That's the thing. The lining has to be separate from, um, you know, the outside to make true box corners and to have them laid down in there nicely. And one of the other most important steps here, if I can, maybe you can see that, see how nice that corner, the lining corner um, is laying inside the bag. And that's because I use a three eighths, uh, three eighths inch seam for the lining. And I use the um, quarter inch on the outside. Can you box the corners if you're using cork? I don't see why not. Um, it would be the same. It would be the same technique, the same thing. If you're making, you know, these bags out of cork, um, I suggest that you know you skip the batting. Uh, if you're just putting cork on the front, skip the batting on the front. You know, if you want to make the whole bag out of um, cork, I say skip all the batting altogether. Uh, Kathy, it, how deep do you make your corners? That's a personal preference. This, I did the finished width of this is one and a half inches. If you're doing one of the smaller bags, um, let me grab my bags here. Like if you're doing, you know, like this, I think this is maybe the six by six. I don't know if I'd want an inch and a half down here. So it's kind of your preference, you know, make one, see if you like it. If you don't, next time you make it, change, you know, change the box that you make. It's the size of the box that you make. Uh, Linda's done it with cork, no problems. Linda is the one who experiments with everything. And so she's got um, a lot of experience. Kath, Karen, I don't sell the uh, pressing station. Um, this one from Dime, I don't sell this on my website. This comes from Designs and Machine Embroidery. That PDF file has the link for this. All right, so I wanna thank you all for joining me. Um, hope you have a great rest of your Saturday. Tentatively right now, my demo date for November is gonna be November 13th. So just kind of write that date down. You know, keep watching Embroidery Garden's Facebook page for, um, you know, an announcement of what that demo is going to be and exactly when it will be. Remember, go to Embroidery Garden's Facebook page, Instagram page, enter that Shannon Fabrics giveaway. Um, you will love the fabric and a two yard cut. You could do so much with that. Um, you know, so that's a really um, uh, great thing. So I saw someone asked about the inside pocket. Oh, here's the one that uh, Linda made. She added the inside pockets, you know, maybe that'll have to be another demo. Um, but, oh, I didn't even show you. She added pockets on both sides. So here she has pockets. Again, let me show you. You can see they're vinyl. And then on the opposite side, she's got three pockets here on the opposite side. Isn't that cool? So maybe we'll have to get Linda to uh, show us how to do that next. Um, so again, it makes the bag set completely uh, versatile. Remember, it's the bag set that Molly made um, SVG files work with. That's at mollymadedesigns.com. She has three different sets of SVG files that work with all of the bags from the set. All right. So thank you all for joining me. Um, I hope you have a great day. Just watch for other um, demos and things to be announced. Thanks, everyone. Bye.